Well, when he passed, Solomon felt like, wow, I'm in these massive shoes. I don't know exactly what to do. And so the Bible says that he just was listening to what his father told him to do. And he was making sacrifices and, and doing what his father told him to do. And because of that, one night the Lord came to him and is like, hey, whatever you want, you know, ask it. And he had every opportunity to say, you know what, these guys have really upset me. I want revenge or wow, I want to be rich. But he didn't. And he said, I just want to I want to have the, the knowledge. I want the wisdom to know how to occupy in my role. Well, he was like, I've got these a very hard job ahead of me. I want to be able to do it well. And I know I don't have what I need in order to do it well. So, Lord, that's what I want. I, I, I want that. Now, that ended up being wisdom. And God was so blown away by this request because, and this shows us something about God. God was not asking the question or opening up heaven on his behalf to test him. It really was to bless him with whatever he wanted. So if he would have said, hey, I want riches, he would have given him riches. He's like, hey, you know what? I want a thousand wives, which kind of ended up happening. Um, God would have done it. But he's like... I'm so shocked that you asked for wisdom. I'm going to go ahead and give it all to you. I'm giving you everything. And Rochelle brought this up as we were discussing it earlier. It's kind of like that verse that says, you know, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. Well, this is the prime example of, of, of that verse. That he, that's exactly what he does. And so as we're discussing our own pursuit of wisdom, I know it's not the, the, the funnest conversation. I know it's not... The, the, the life-changing topic that's going to draw thousands to hear, like probably dating will. I know it's not that fun, but apparently if we follow Solomon's example, there will be no one like us and no one to come after us like us. In fact, they've actually studied how much money this man would have had. They studied his net worth. And they say it is still almost two times the world's richest man today. And it was because of the story that we read. Now, when I looked at this, y'all, when I saw this, something specific hit me. It was the, the very first verse. Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David, his father. And that right there is what was the catalyst or God coming to him at night saying, hey, tell me what you want. How many of us would love to have a moment where the Lord actually made himself real to us? And in that moment was requested, hey, what do you want to see me do? I'm sure in a room like this, there's a lot of different requests. And I'm sure not many of them would actually be all that selfish. For some, I think it would be, hey, I want to know that like, I'm going to find my spouse. For some, it's like, hey, I really just want to know what my career is so I can do that. Some people might say, I want my parents to get back together because this is ridiculous. You know, it could be a, a lot of different things. But Solomon is experiencing this moment where he asks, God asks him, like, what do you want from me? And I think verse three is the catalyst from where he was to that moment. It says that he loved the Lord. He loved the Lord. That to me is not as simple as our world is making it today. I think that's actually pretty profound. That Solomon loved the Lord. Today, there's a lot of people who love the qualities of the Lord. They love his characteristics. They have a hard time loving him. They love what he can do for him. A lot of us love God for what he can do for us. But I wonder how many of them love him. You know, the truth is, if Jesus was to walk the earth today, we'd be very surprised that he does not agree with a lot of the narratives we thought he would agree with. I wonder how many of us would follow him, even if we found he didn't agree with this popular mindset or that popular mindset. Crazy thing is we don't have to really wonder if that would happen because if you read the Bible, there were a lot of people who followed him because he thought he was going to do one thing and then left him when he found out that's not what he wanted to do. So when Solomon loved the Lord, 
This was something significant. It was substantial. But if you notice the very next thing, it says he was following the statutes of his father. The very first week that we talked about wisdom, we talked about the wisdom of obedience. Samuel actually says that obedience is better than sacrifice. And he was obeying what his father told him to do. Now, I don't think that the thing that we should be telling everybody tonight is, hey, leave here tonight and follow and obey your earthly father. With a room like this, there's so many different earthly fathers out there. We don't really know what making that charge would equal. But if we kind of reverse engineer this, whoever was giving him the direction in his life that pushed him to love the Lord, that was the man that Solomon needed to follow. So let me ask you, who in your life, right here, right now, is giving you the direction that's really pushing you to pursue the Lord? Whoever that person is, that's the person I think that you need to say tonight, it's not about my opinion, but I'm going to listen to that person. You know, that may mean that somebody's been telling you to stop posting a certain way, and you're like, you know what, they just don't really get it. But you find that this is the person that's actually been pushing you to love the Lord. You may want to leave here tonight and listen to him. Maybe that person is saying to, to handle your money differently or to handle your, your mouth differently. Or maybe they're saying the relationship you're in is just like not legit. Well, whoever this person is, maybe it is your pastor. Maybe it is Pastor Steve. Maybe it is Rochelle and I. Maybe it is a connect group leader. Or maybe it is your parents because they're godly and they love the Lord. Whoever this person is, if they're pushing you and giving you the directive to love the Lord, you got to listen to them. Because Solomon loved the Lord and he listened to the man who was giving him direction to love the Lord. And that moment put him at the right moment, at the right place, at the right time, doing the right thing. And it led him to really what is an open heaven. Because that's what, that's what Solomon experienced. God literally was like, hey, what do you want? I'll give it to you. And this is much different than what he told David. Because when David messed up with Bathsheba, the man of God came to him saying, the word of the Lord says that I gave you everything you could ever want. And if you even wanted more, I would have given it to you. It's literally like open heaven. That's what God wants for you. Open heaven. He'll give you whatever you want. He wants to bless you. But are we loving him? Are we obeying and listening and following the, the man or woman of God that is, is really giving us the direction on how to live good godly lives? Because if not, we're going to miss out on an opportunity to one day experience open heaven. But if we can leave this place and be wise enough to, to obey and wise enough to love the Lord, even if we don't agree with everything, I know it's only a matter of time before you find yourself. You find yourself under an open heaven. And I say it's only a matter of time because this, this story says it was after he had sacrificed a thousand offerings. I don't think that means that we all leave and like, I'm sorry, but like a Catholic, start counting. Once I get to a thousand, man, here it is. Because it's not really the act as much as it's the heart. But the thousand shows that he was willing to keep going. He was willing to keep obeying, to keep obeying, to keep obeying. When it wasn't all working out, he just kept doing it. He kept being who he needed to be. And he one day found himself under open heaven. So that's my part. That's what I see. When I look at this, that's the part that hits me in the face. You know, I, I am who I am because I'm just going to tell you the truth. I listen to my pastor. My pastor happens to be my dad. I just listen to him. I just, I just do. Some of my friends are like, yeah, hey, you know, you're almost 30. You listen to your daddy. And I'm like... And I have everything I have because of it. What do you have? So I, 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 that hit me so hard. But I know as we were talking about it, Rochelle, you had a completely different uh, viewpoint when we read the story together. What was your main takeaway from the story? Um, I think it was when I was thinking about that God came to him and just asked him, what do you want? And I kind of put myself in those shoes and I was like, God came to me and asked me that question. Why would I say 
And of course, because we have this example, we're like, of course I would ask for wisdom. <laughs> but then I thought, like, realistically, why would I say? Like, we immediately as humans just go to material things. Like, we think, I would want the biggest house. I would want to make sure that my family has everything they ever need. And I would just think of earthly things. And what really surprised me is that he asked for wisdom. And when I thought about that, I was like, I wonder if he even knew what he was asking for when he actually asked for that. Because when he asked for it, he was coming from a very humble place. We see that he was telling him, thanking him for being so good to his father and for now letting him now be able to do what his father did. So he came in a humble position and, and then he said, I just, I need wisdom. Because I imagine I'm like, wow, he was probably in a place where he saw a big nation and said, I'm in charge of all of this and I can't do it by myself. Like he said, I don't know how to go out or come in. He, he was in a desperate place. And having God come and ask him, what do you want? He just said, I need wisdom. And when I thought about it a little bit more, I thought about, you know, when he asked for that one thing, I don't know if he realized that was the only thing he needed to ask for to have everything. Does that make sense? Because when he asked for wisdom, that meant that he was gonna be a good steward of what God gave him. That he was gonna be a good manager of whatever he needed to manage. And when you are a good steward and you know how to do things right because you love the Lord, God truly gives you everything. I mean, why would God give the riches to a man that doesn't understand how to properly use his money or care for it? Because even the guys that have it end up losing it if you don't properly know how to, you know, manage your money or your things. And that just showed me that we first of all go to we need earthly things. But then that if you have if you ask God for wisdom and you truly seek wisdom, you're gonna be able to have it all. Because God is going to trust you with his things. Because at the end of the day everything that Solomon had was God's. If he was the richest man in the world, that's only because God allowed it. Not because he worked himself and said, I'm gonna work every day and I have all this money. The truth is it was in one moment God asked and because of that one response, it gave him everything. And that encouraged me because I thought about sometimes we just pray, we need more of this, we need more of that. God, I need more of this. But we don't sit down and just come humbly and say, thank you. Thank you for everything you've done for, for my family. Thank you for everything that you're doing for me. And I just need you right now. Like, that's what he did. He was like, I need you. I need you to give me wisdom. Because in the middle of this situation, I might not have everything that I need, but I need your wisdom. I need your help. And in that moment, God gave him that and everything else. So that was what really kind of blessed me. So you saw it from the perspective of if God was going to give him everything he wanted, he needed wisdom in order to handle it, right? Yeah. And I think God would have give, given him whatever he asked for, but he would have not had everything. So the people who are single in the room and are like really wanting the Lord to bring them their perfect person. Well, it's like maybe you should be asking for God to give you wisdom so when that does happen, you know how to not ruin it. Yeah. You know? Hey. <laughs> how do you manage your single spirit? Because God is not going to trust you with your spouse if you can't manage or be a good steward of your spouse or take care of them properly. So I think you need wisdom in every area of your life if you want to truly succeed.